Hello there. There we go. I did the thing. I made the joke. I did the thing where, you know, Bart has to say the thing and everyone's happy and everyone's cheering. The meme is complete. Look, FFG did the thing too. It's great. We've made the joke. We can move on with our lives. Hi, my name's Nick, and we're going to have a look at some more spoiled cards for Star Wars Unlimited Twilight of the Republic. We had the Obi-Wan leader spoiled, and a bunch of cards that go along with him. With this comes kind of-ish a new archetype, kind of, kind of not, as well as a new rare base spoil as well. We have a new cycle of these for this set. So let's do it. Let's start with the man himself, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Patient Mentor. In Vigilance and Heroic Aspects. Action, heal one damage from a unit. And when deployed, he is a 4-7 with Sentinel. And on attack, heal one damage from a unit. If you do, deal one damage to a different unit. And this card was spoiled well, for me in Australia last night. Um, the cycle of spoilers from FFG are coming in the middle of the night for us in Australia. So whenever that happens, i got to kind of decide whether I make a video or I sleep on it and have a think about it. I'm glad I did this time because a whole bunch of other cards were spoiled that go along with this, which gives it way better context. The initial response to this has been somewhat negative. Um, he's not doing anything super powerful. On the face of it, he's not really doing much unique things either. Uh, these sort of blue-white commanders that can uh, buff your friendly units. In the case of Obi-Wan, he heals something. Uh, the difference between him and someone who can do a more powerful effect is they have more hoops to jump through. For example, if we have a look at Rey, she has to pay one to activate her ability. If we look at Luke Skywalker, he has to pay one, and he can only use it on units that have entered play this turn. And then there's Finn, which is a card. Um, Obi-Wan is interesting because he asks the fewest questions um, on the front side of his car. He just tap, heal, great. You can do it from turn one. Um, whether you will be able to do it on turn one is uh, debatable. It is possible. But ultimately, we have something that can sort of prolong the game, protect your units. And I think looking at this, that's kind of what Obi-Wan is leaning into. Before we do a bit of brewing and um, think about the kind of things we can do with Obi-Wan, let's look at the other cards that were spoiled first and circle back around to that. Now, these next two cards were spoiled by the Instagram account Neverboard Gaming. And I think as content creators, it's really important that we make sure we mention this when we're talking about spoilers. Um, I think in other games, especially the things like Magic the Gathering, when uh, content creators are given spoilers and, and people then sort of highlight them and talk about them on their own channel. The work of the original creator who ended up spoiling the card can get a bit lost in the mix. So I'd like to actually make a point of highlighting these and make sure I link everyone through to these uh, whenever these are mentioned. So link to Neverboard Gaming down into the description. And if any of you notice I talk about a card and I forget to mention the original content creator that spoiled it, please let me know and I'll remedy that. We have Royal Guard Attaché. This costs two resources in the Vigilant aspect, a 2-5, and when played, deal two damage to this unit. Um, an interesting card. I don't know what they're doing in terms of flavor, like why is a Royal Guard hurting himself when he enters play? I feel like that kind of ability would have worked on like a like a, a trooper in the middle of battle, like, like protecting the front line, like he's got like damage on his armor and that kind of thing. That would have flavorfully made more sense. All of that aside, let's look at the actual sort of in-game impact of this. Um, it's interesting because essentially you have three health remaining on this unit uh, just played without any other kind of help effects to help him. So he's kind of like a 2-3 that has uh, outs to basically grow in the amount of health he has. Um, and that's not uninteresting. I don't think this is the best thing we can be doing with Obi-Wan. Um, I think this is an obvious card to sort of show off and build around. You know, if you want to sort of build a, a casual, fun Obi-Wan deck, this is the kind of thing you'll stick in as a nice budget option, but in terms of what Obi-Wan can do, I think we have much better options available to us. Although, interestingly, it does offer a new trait in Naboo. That means there's a possibility when we have a look at some new cards, Naboo might be relevant um, when we're looking at the effects of other cards, like maybe there'll be a, a Queen Amidala or something like that that can work with other Naboo units. That might be interesting. Probably not something that combos with Obi-Wan, but we'll see what happens with that. We also had revealed Obi-Wan's Aether Sprite. This is why I hate flying. Five cost, vigilance, and heroic. Uh, four, six. This is a Jedi Republic vehicle fighter. When played and on attack, you may deal one damage to this unit and two damage to another space unit. And when I first saw that, I thought, hang on, that's just a bad version of the Interceptor. Surely, 
you know, if it's going to cost five, you, you could deal three or maybe you can hit like ground units. Then I realized it works on attack as well. Um, this is something that's repeatable. Um, it obviously works great with uh, Obi-Wan as a leader because you can repeat it and you can keep healing this. That seems great. But even so, I think this is kind of fine without Obi-Wan as well. Um, there are other kind of blue-white combination decks that are going to be more than happy to play this kind of thing. It's a weird kind of... It almost feels like that ability is red um, in odd ways. It only sort of within the context of playing it alongside Obi-Wan does it make sense to the blue-white card. Um, but I like it a lot. Uh, it's repeatable removal. If there's some nice squishy Vulture Droids uh, revealed for the format, this might be a nice foil to that. And it's just a decent stat line with a great repeatable trigger. Um, I don't really have much to say, I just think this is a decent card. But in terms of looking at this archetype and building around it, this is the one I'm most interested in. Uh, yes, hello there, as we previously spoiled in this video. Um, this is a three cost Vigilance Heroic Trick event. Choose a unit that entered play this turn and give it negative four, negative four for this phase. We've seen a lot of nice efficient removal like Force Choke and stuff like that printed in Villainous. So it's great to see something like this in Heroic. Indeed, I think for like an Obi-Wan, Sentinel, big chunky guys that are hard to kill shell, a nice efficient removal is going to be a key thing to making that work. Um, this alongside maybe some top end removal like Vanquish or Fell the Dragon or something like that is great, but being able to remove the health threshold of a unit by four for three is fantastic. Yes, they have to have entered play this turn. Um, this might just be a terrible top deck, say if your opponent plays a big chonker of a unit and the next turn you draw this and this can't answer that. It has to already be in your hand ready to go before they play that. That kind of sucks a little bit. At the same time, I think the low cost and the efficiency of this more than makes up for that kind of stuff. Indeed, I like the way this pairs with a card like Mystic Reflection. Uh, we sort of have a couple of different resource cost, low-end stuff that can reduce the toughness of your opponent's units. And considering Obi-Wan's already a Force user, there's a good chance you're going to want to have Force users in this deck for these kinds of synergies. So I like that we have both of these kinds of cards. I think for this deck to work, efficient removal is going to be key. And indeed, looking at these cards, sort of evaluating the shell they go into, it'd be easy to say, oh, why don't we just you know, like use Daring Raid and Open Fire, that kind of stuff. Sure, those cards are just as good. In fact, they're more flexible because they don't ask you to, um, you know, have a force unit or target units that have entered play that turn. Just remember that stuff that actively reduces the health threshold of your opponent, not just deal damage, it gets around things like shields, it gets around like the damage prevention on Boba Fett's backpack, that kind of stuff. It is a relatively cleaner answer. And even if they aren't quite able to lower the stats on your opponent's units enough, you can finish them off with your own units or say, attack them with your own units and then finish them off with one of these. So I think this is cool and a very welcome thing for heroic removal and uncommon. Yes, FFG, keep printing staple removal at uncommon or common. Not rare, not legendary. Keep staple removal accessible. I'm going to keep banging on that drum. So in terms of what we can do with Obi-Wan, there's a couple of different color pairings that interest me. Um, I don't know if these are going to be particularly competitive, but at least for like casual play and some nice synergistic decks that you can sort of take down to your locals. I've got a couple of different ideas here. First of all, apart from those removal events I was talking about before, I think pairing in with other Sentinel units, making sure that there are big chonkers that are really hard for your opponent to get through, is going to be a key thing to stalling this out and make sure you can get late game value and just destroy your opponent late in the game with Haymakers. We can use Old Man Obi-Wan. Actually pairs with this quite nice. A very difficult unit to kill and when they do, he can give experience tokens and he gets a nice little buff with force users. So again, that little sub theme actually might be relevant. We can use a card like Redemption in the top end, something that's really annoying, which also gives you a sentinel in space. And if your opponent spends a lot of time spamming unit across your ground units or like they pump a lot of damage into your base, just trying to be aggro enough to eke out enough of an advantage, this can be a great stall for those kinds of strategies. Um, if we were to pair Obi-Wan with yellow, for example, we can look at adding in things like the Mandalorian and Grogu. Grogu already feels like a great pair alongside Obi-Wan. Again, we're looking at things that can stall out the game. Just tapping down your opponent's best unit every turn sounds awesome. And that also gives us an out to play things like Chewbacca, um, a unit that will frequently just receive a lot of damage. And, you know, I don't think it's going to be super consistent, but being able to heal him might be the difference between him having one extra attack and 
that's really, really powerful as well. And then alongside Redemption, we can use like Han Solo and stuff like that in the top end. Or we use like an Ambusher that's prone to taking more damage and we can use Obi-Wan's advantage. And we can use Obi-Wan to heal that and sort of keep going. And maybe like an Ambush theme might be interesting alongside Obi-Wan. Speaking of which, if we were happen to pair Obi-Wan with Green, uh, we can pair him alongside Energy Conversion Lab, which we already know is a fantastic card. Uh, being able to ambush your units and then heal them seems really, really good. Um, I don't think this is necessarily the best pairing for Energy Conversion Lab, but it might just be the best base for Obi-Wan. We'll see how that goes. But moving into green, let's just get a stronger Sentinel sub-theme. We can use things like Bright Hope in the mid-game, recur some units, just outvalue your opponent, and we can use General Recon as well. Um, a card that is basically like a Sentinel Lord of types. He can give units Sentinel or he can benefit other Sentinels. He can actually give Obi-Wan an experience token on the front end. I like both of these color pairings. I think in terms of power level though, green's probably going to be the better option. Maybe that's just because of ECL, but, but at the same time, I really like Obi-Wan alongside Recon as well. And indeed, just talking a bit more about Obi-Wan as well, um, People are quite down on this card overall in terms of power level, but he's a leader unit with Sentinel. That's kind of a new thing in the game. Sentinels can be super relevant on a lot of different board states and having uh, permanent access to one uh, in the form of a leader is something that we haven't seen before. And I think people might be undervaluing it. Plus that trigger on the deployed side, it's very, very interesting. It does uh, sort of reward you for being the patient player. I mean, that's. That's the theme here. Obi-Wan is patient. Wait for your opponent to attack in and then you swing back and you you take a wound off one of your friendly dudes and you fling it at your opponent. I don't think that's the, um, the flavor they're quite going for, but he basically rewards you for not being too aggressive, which is an interesting kind of archetype. Also, another little fun interaction. I don't think I've seen anyone make this comment yet, but he says heal one damage from a unit. He does not say heal one damage from a friendly unit. So if all of your units have no damage on them, and you've got one piece of damage on one of your opponent's units, and another one of your opponent's units has one health, well, guess what? You can take that damage and you can ping down that unit. That's not a bad interaction. That could be quite helpful. Uh, being able to shift around the damage on your opponent's units is kind of a unique thing. And look, I think Obi-Wan definitely on the front side, on his leader side, is just not that exciting, but when he's deployed, um, there's a few unprecedented things he's doing here, and I think that makes him a card that I just can't write off immediately. And we have one more card that was revealed today as well, Patronaki Arena. This is the first of the rare cycle of bases that we've seen from this set. It's got 26 health, um, one more than the rare cycle of bases from the original set. And instead of having an epic action, it's got a static ability, which is very interesting indeed. Each leader unit you control gets plus one, plus O. Oh. And considering the other yellow uh, rare base is kind of average, this might be a decent staple in a lot of yellow decks. I suppose the leaders that can deploy a bit earlier are going to get a bit more uh, value out of this. Leaders that want to keep attacking, have attack triggers. Um, you want to make those attacks more profitable. It seems fine. Um, you are essentially going back on four life and you're not likely to get four extra damage out of this. Um, you, you know, it's not going to win you any races. The key thing that's going to make a base like this worth it is if that four life that you're paying to run this base lets you profitably attack with a leader where you otherwise couldn't. That one extra damage lets you remove one of your opponent's units and that's a, a key part of the game that helps swing the game in your favor. If that happens consistently, then yes, this base is absolutely worth it. But we'll see how the meta shakes out and if that's realistic. But interesting nonetheless. Also, this does say each leader, which makes me wonder if FFG is going to experiment with multiple leaders at some time in the future. Maybe like a, a pairing of leaders, um, you know, lower power level, but you get two of them instead of one. Might be broken, but uh, I guess we'll see what FFG does with that. In the meantime, thank you all so much for watching the video. We've got a couple of big events for Star Wars Unlimited coming up in Australia. Don't forget we have the Planetary Qualifier in Melbourne late in October and next month we have Onyx Unlimited. I'll have the links for both of those in the description down below. Don't forget to join my Discord as well where we can chat about all things X-Wing and Star Wars Unlimited and I'll catch you all in the next video.